back on the 2006 MK5 Jetta. Of course, as I always say, this one actually being developed mid-year 2005. Okay, so here's the issue that is cropped up and I actually told as we were traveling down uh, that I should take lead because if any vehicle is going to break down, it's going to be my older vehicle. And uh, I've been having some clutch issues, but now it's fully gone out. You see that? It's just stuck on the floor. Got a little bit of plate. You got to lift it back up. It should automatically come up uh, through the hydraulic system. So that's what we're, this video is going to be about. In order to get this thing out, we've got two bolts down here at the bottom. And then I'm not going to be able to get a good angle on that, I believe. Especially that light washing out everything. But uh, there's going to be one bolt just north, kind of centered between those two bolts, uh, nuts you see down there, but north of the uh, the shaft and up underneath the wheel well. So that those two have to come off and we can walk around to the front. In order to access the, the front side of that uh, master clutch cylinder or whatever you want to call it, and you can actually see, where is it at? Back here, this tube coming off of uh, our brake fluid, the uh, clutch cylinder uses the same hydraulic fluid, or should I say brake fluid, uses the brake same fluid as our brake shoes. Um, there's a high pressure slide, low pressure slide, this tube right here that you see uh, right down in there, I'm kind of touching it. There we go. That's the return tube, which, uh, Will definitely come in handy when we bleed it but in order to gain access to it you can see how that tube wraps around there what i have to do is remove the battery cover the battery itself the entire battery box and then we have access to the other side where i have to disconnect the low pressure side and the high pressure side and i think uh, one other connector and then we should be able to from the inside of the vehicle underneath the dash pull the entire thing through the firewall and out we'll see how that goes so far fairly straightforward 10 millimeter socket to remove the battery clamps get them loose 13 millimeter socket for this bolt down here we need to take that out and i should be able to pull the battery straight out of the box with uh these items removed and not too difficult getting the battery out in this guy. Of course, I've done this many a times, given the wear and a broken tab over there. But just be careful. You do have tabs on the back that have to be lifted up. They uh, basically seat over a lip here, here, and one on the other side. Now, I might remove the bottom of this battery box. And if so, this is just a 10 mil, 10 mil mill there and then a 10 millimeter here as well and I should be able to get this entire bottom box out but uh, you can see what we need to get to right back here of course probably not the best angle whatsoever but uh, let me grab that screwdriver I used to pry up on my tabs so this little this is the high pressure side that little C clamp you got right there, that's going to come off so this can get disconnected. There is a uh, electrical plug, what carries signals and etc. It's got to be disconnected over here. And then the uh, low pressure tube, that's got to be disconnected. This top piece right here. Alright, so I did... So I did go ahead and remove the battery box. Now you can see inside of there better. If I'll stay focused. But uh, I went ahead and cleaned up around the master clutch cylinder. And then our slave cylinder is down there. That's that black tube you see right here. 
Oh, never mind the dirt and debris that's down there. I wiped up around there. Well, I need to get to it. Means I need to take this, uh, this ring clip off and then this tube off and that connector off next. It was incredibly difficult. Uh, what I ended up having to do though, because I just can't get anything in position well enough to get the uh, clamp off that upper tube is I just uh, pulled the clamp down right here off of where it attaches to our uh, brake fluid reservoir and pulled that out here so I'll end up pulling this entire hose out in one go but I'm going to take this clamp off so I don't lose it I don't want to get snagged on anything and obviously we'll go back on once I'm done C, that C-clip down there came out pretty easily. Just used a screwdriver to kind of pop one side of it and then I was able to move it out just enough to get the uh, standard screwdriver over the other side. And here it goes. Although, focus, there we go. Pulled it right on out. Be careful so you don't lose that. Although I can't currently get that tube out right here so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, get the bolts removed on the inside and see if uh, once I go to remove pull it out through the firewall if I'll be able to get it loosened up and and out all right as far as uh removing these bolts go there's a two sitting there actually Removed that bottom cover just two screws took it out to give myself some a little more room You have to disconnect that Light there and then pull your OBD2 sensor out Here's a light connect Those are rather simple that one there that one there 13 millimeter uh, The third the third one you have access to all the way up here Where you see uh, if I got a okay angle on it where you see that socket sitting back there but you just need a in 13 millimeter and then as many extensions as possible to get your socket as far back there as you can and then you should be able to remove it from underneath the dash so I'm about to get it removed and then we'll start playing with it some more okay so with all three of the inside bolts removed at uh, that high pressure Hose you currently see disconnected right down here. It was actually very easy to pop out with a little bit of wiggling. Actually, it was disconnected when I came back out after wiggling the pedal from the inside. So uh, I'm just gonna start pulling this uh, master clutch assembly out now. And uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, well, I got it out. And in the process of doing so, Cause the uh, the spring behind the uh, clutch pedal to pop out, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to do that back in. And I shattered the shaft on the uh, old master cylinder. The reason why it was so difficult to get out was honestly because this uh, tube here was getting caught up on things. So I'm going to get myself a tool that allow me to pry that off, so I can uh, with it, you know putting this in and then putting the tube on down there i have to get the right type of tool to allow me to do that so i don't run into that issue when i'm reinstalling the only difficult thing i think is going to get that spring back in because that's a beefy spring okay clutch assembly has been removed and i'll be honest with you it's a tad bit difficult to get out through the firewall you know i do quite a bit of jiggling around and stuff like that i've got the master clutch cylinder out i kind of broke it as i was taking it out of the car uh, but then you release it out of the back of here now something i want to cover with you real quick um, when this is seated in here okay uh, i can't turn on a light just to make this a little bit better i have to zoom in give me a second there we go you see this uh upper clip right here well it sits into this and you would think that uh you know by looking at this that you have to turn clockwise to get this removed but in actuality that would cause these teeth down here to bind and not come loose so what you actually do is you lift this clip out of that indentation and you turn it counterclockwise 
and you could take it on out. Now, the replacement master clutch cylinder did not come with a, uh, a clutch sensor, so that had to get pulled out of the little housing right here and just moved over. But uh, we're gonna put this back into the, here, same way I took it out. But we'll also have to release this plastic clip in here by pushing in on both sides and then it should fall all the way through. Then we could pull out that broken shaft assembly and we should be able to get it fit all back together. Now, after that, I was kind of debating with myself because I am so unfamiliar with how this clutch works. You know, I think I mentioned that, you know, hopefully it's just the master clutch cylinder. Well, I also read online that the slave cylinder is the one that actually, this is being a replacement, is the one that actually pressurizes and keep pre keeps pressure in the master clutch cylinder. So even if there could be a potential failure in this one that's causing it to lose pressure, what are the odds of this one, the old one, uh, being the cause for this to fail? And since I already have them both apart, or actually since I got this one out and I've got everything out of the car, I'm going to be removing that one as well and replacing it. I just figured it's better safe than sorry. And then I'll have to go through this entire ordeal over again. So let me get this in and then we'll uh, take the old one out of there and we'll compare the two. As far as the uh, slave, uh, clutch slave cylinder is, you're probably best off getting yourself a 13 millimeter uh, close or open wrench get in down here and then you can loosen them up it's kind of a tight fit for a socket set then once you've backed them off a little bit if you can fit your fingers in there then you can get them rested the way out that's what I did on this side then also you have another one of those uh, those clips it's got to get pulled out like you see with that one down there and then this line is gonna have to get disconnected but uh, I'm gonna get this pulled out we've gotten the uh, new master slave cylinder in and the clutch in and i'll be honest with you getting the clutch pedal in with the new master uh clutch cylinder was a lot easier than getting it out so uh the fitment was a lot easier i learned that uh actually when you pull it out you kind of need to get it up and then you can get the rest of the way out and then you can bring it down so hopefully you don't struggle the way i did but uh, i'm gonna finish getting this one out and uh we'll compare the uh, slave cylinder, excuse me, down there, with the uh, replacement one I've gotten online. Now that I got that part out, uh, this is how it's set in the car. You know, those two bolts, like I said. Um, learning this the hard way, I would highly recommend that other two bolts, you take the innermost one out first, just because, well, I'll explain why here in a minute, and then take the outer one out. Take the innermost one out first, and then take the outer one out. Then when you go to put it back in, put the outer one most in first, and then this one. And it's because there's really not a whole lot of room to get your fingers in here to untwist this one. And it would just take forever with a closed or open-ended uh, ratchet. And if you remove this bolt first, this side is spring-loaded, so it's going to keep coming out with the bolt, making it even harder to keep loose. So take this one out first, and then take this one out. And when you go to put it back together, put this one in pretty much, um, you know, snug maybe. And then put this one in and then tighten from there. Okay. We can see some differences uh, between them. This one being made out of what feels like primarily plastic. This one, some type of metal, maybe an aluminum. Who knows? Uh, in here, this piece down here, you see that this is filled in with another plastic piece teeth of which sit in here uh, this one is fully open so of course it's not made exactly the same so I can't remove that and put that in here but um, they're roughly I mean the dimensions are slightly different but the whole sizes are exactly the same the um, when you get them fully out the length of this is you know, roughly the same I think it's going to work at least I hope. So hopefully this one I got as a replacement is going to work perf work fine with this. But uh, again, you know, spring loaded. Uh, just be careful. She likes to spit at you. But uh, oh, we'll get this one in and we'll see how it goes. Now I've recorded a segment where I had this installed 
and mention how to install it that may become that may still be video timeline wise before or I might put it after this so if it appears jarring the placement of that segment of this video let me explain the reason why <clears throat> after I had gotten the replacement actually here goes the original the original master clutch cylinder in uh, the replacement for it I primed it and uh, bled the system and thought all was good and the first time I go to press the clutch with my foot I snapped the stem so I returned that one get another one bleed it same thing happens snap the stem so i take it back get my money back and i think to myself well sometimes you just can't get parts from an auto parts store sometimes you have to go direct to dealership for those of you who worked on vehicles you kind of you, you've experienced that at least once i have to say wherein you get a part and it just always seems to fail then you get a dealership part and for some reason that part doesn't fail and you can go on about your business so i eventually paid the extra dollars for a dealership part Got it in, bled the system as much as I could, and, uh, you know, to where I didn't see any bubbles. It's like, okay, cool. We should be good to go. And at first startup, when I go to, after I've started up the vehicle, because the clutch is currently down, the clutch comes up, and I go to press it down again, and it snaps. So, what I discovered, and this wasn't on a, Volkswagen video. I was actually watching a uh, slave cylinder replacement on like an Audi TT or RS4 or something like that. The slave cylinder actually has to be fully in while you're bleeding the system. This little area right here. So this is the bad one that we removed. Here goes the new one. And you can see I kind of made a little uh, device here to help hold pressure down on the bottom plate and hold it in a bit. I know that's that's extremely, extremely makeshift, um, but it will serve its purpose. So you don't need to put this in yet. What we have to do is we have to hook everything up without this being installed into its into the case, the housing or casing or whatever's attached to the motor, and then we bleed the system, and then we can put this back in. Now, YouTube, what it is, I fully understand that, you know. Nobody, I mean, nobody watches long videos. It's no longer about the hero's journey, per se, and the adversity that the person goes over in order to meet the goal at the very end, what be it uh, a repaired vehicle. Nowadays, it's simply my vehicle or my thingamajig is broke. What are the results? So people watch the opening, and then they watch the results to, to kind of see, oh, this person did this. Here were the results. They don't go through the whole journey. So that is just what it is. For those of you who do watch the entire journey, I appreciate you. Thumbs up to you. Uh, many blessings to you. Leave your, leave a comment in the comment section. But, uh, you know, with this day and age with individuals who are raised on the SpongeBob of SquarePants and have the attention span of, you know, a 30-second uh, reel, they just don't stay. They don't watch these longer instructional videos. Uh, thus lower revenue when it comes to YouTube and all that revenue algorithm. Although I don't really care about the revenue. Uh, I just do this because I enjoy it and because I hope to put out a product that somebody else watches and can follow along step by step and it helps them out as well. Like I always say, I don't do everything necessarily 100% the right way, but I figure it out and I typically get things done. So I'm going to get this over to the vehicle. And then we are going to uh, go ahead and, and bleed the system. I'll cover that. Then I'll have to get this installed uh, at the end. We'll have to figure that out. So time to transition over to bleeding the vehicle. So slave cylinder sitting down there. You can see this top is decompressed with that makeshift U-bolt kind of thing I got going on. I've got a tube running from the, the bleeder valve up into a bottle that has some brake fluid in it what so i can see the bubbles as it goes into that bottle you can also follow them along the pipe i've topped up 
the fuel line reservoir, okay? Because the tube that comes out here and attaches to the master is what feeds this entire mechanism all the way through these lines. And of course, these lines are kind of out of their, they're not disconnected, but they are not in the, uh, where the bushings meet up with the uh, metal to keep them from rattling around. They're not inside of there, so I can kind of move them back and forth. I re-hooked up the, the uh, end tube, uh, what's feeding from this into the master slave, slave cylinder. I've hooked back up the bottom uh, metal pipe or tube what comes out and goes through this snakeways Y thing that's coming down and snaking up and goes all the way over to the slave. And I've hooked back up the sensor. So now we have to bleed it. Okay. Now as of right now, this will probably go right to the floor. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. If you put too much pressure on this thing, you can snap that master slave cylinder. I mean, it doesn't take much. So I'm putting it to the floor, slowly. And then I'm gonna come back over. And I'm going to take, a, I think an eight millimeter a ratchet. Loosen up the bleeder valve. You should hear a, a slight hiss. Hopefully, maybe some liquid will shoot out. Hopefully, if there's any liquid in your line. Uh, but if not, I'm just opening it up for a second, closing it and repeating the process. So, a little bit of bubbles did come up there at the very bottom of this tube. So what I did is I tightened it back down. Okay. Uh, make sure this is on good enough. It is. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Tighten it back down to close off that bleeder valve. We'll come back over here. And pull this back up. Now, can it go down again? Yeah, I'm going to put it back down again. So up will prime it, down will pressurize it. Now, at some point when you go to prime it, it might not go back down. Okay? It might be super tough. When that happens, you actually have to loosen the bleeder valve first before you slowly, slowly, slowly push on this to push out all of that brake fluid which will also bring out all the bubbles as well so I need to do this until it tightens up or until the pedal automatically just comes back up but I'll let you know which occurs first around the third time we start to get fluid coming up yeah there's a lot of air in this this where I'm having to remove everything uh, even if you see a lot here fluid coming through the pipe too doesn't mean that there won't be a pocket of air eventually come up through all this so I mean what I believe is the wisest thing to do is just bleed this and bleed it and bleed it and keep bleeding until you see no more bubbles permanently don't ever be uh, too I, you know, I think it'd be wise to be overly cautious because air in, in the uh, clutch line will keep your clutch from performing as it should so around the fourth time I slowly put this down, I think we're on the fifth time now, you see how this isn't going all the way back down? And I don't want to push it because I can break, 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 break that master slave cylinder. I'm just going to leave it up. I'm going to open up the bleeder valve, then come in here and slowly put it all the way down to the floor and then turn off, close the bleeder valve. And then after I've gotten this to the floor, walked around, closed off the bleeder valve, I will lift this all the way back up from the floor and repeat that process. So, bleeder valve is open and I'm just gonna slowly, slowly, slowly push it to the floor, leaving it there. Look at all that air coming up from what just came out. Like I said, you can't overdo bleeding, bleed it. But now I need to close this off. And with the bleeder valve shut off, pulling this back up. Again, can't push it all the way down. Not gonna force it. So it's time to open it back up and then come in and then slowly push it down and repeat that process. This is the point where I repeat the process to the point 
there are no more air bubbles whatsoever. Around the seventh pump or so, went ahead and just filled this up a tad bit more. Again, you don't want the level to drop below where the tube is disconnected from there. So just ensure that you're topped off. But, you know, like I said, probably seven pumps in, we still had a bubble come out. So time to get back to it and continue doing this. So this has taken me quite a while to bleed and I made a couple of mistakes. So hopefully you won't run into. Um, basically this tube came off and I ended up sucking air back into the system, which sucked. So I had to restart the entire process. But now it's uh, super tight. And here's the deal. The, uh, this guy right here, can't, can't budget whatsoever. I mean, it is hard, can't budget. So, can't push it in. What you gotta do, now, bring this up one more time. Okay, now with that up, this should be able to move. Yeah, and it does, I can push down on it pretty well. I can tell it's full of fluid, full, full of fluid, because I can feel it moving. And if I listen carefully, you can hear it coming back out the tube and into there. This I tapped off several times. Uh, also note, see how rounded off this is right here? Okay, when you put your finger down in the hole, the cavity that goes into, you feel a little metal plate that has a rounded end into it. Okay, the ball of this needs to go directly into that little plate that is rounded off in the center. That's how it lines up. Okay, well, I've probably gone over this way too many times at this point, but let me walk you through exactly how I ended up bleeding this totally. So I had those um, brackets all on the slave cylinder on the back side of the scene, okay, and <clears throat> made sure that my my canister was top, uh, topped off the brake, uh, where the brake fluid goes. And with that uh, piston inside the slave cylinder fully depressed with those devices, I used the uh, clutch pedal to bleed out until I saw no bubbles, okay? From that point, I left the, uh, I closed off the tap for the bleeder valve Pulled the clutch pedal all the way to the front. That allowed me to then push in and out the piston on the slave cylinder. So at that point, what I did is I manually bled the slave cylinder only. Okay. So what I did is I, as I got my hand on one side of the slave cylinder with the piston right in the palm, and I would loosen up the nut for the bleeder valve. And I'd push in the piston and get all the air bubbles out, then tighten up the nut and then release and allow slowly and allow that piston to pull the brake fluid through uh, our line. Okay, I always kept that topped off to make sure that it wasn't getting below where this rubber outlet is, which feeds the master cylinder. But once I got all the bubbles out that way, then I put the slave cylinder in, making sure that the piston for that slave cylinder set right in there properly. And then I worked on bleeding just the master side. So again, uh, what, what I would do is I would, uh, two people, I had my wife put her foot on the clutch pedal, and just keep pressure on it, but not to push. I would loosen the, uh, the bleeder valve then I'd have her push slowly with her toes, push it to the floor until it was at the floor. As soon as she said floor, I tightened that back off. And then she would pull up the clutch pedal slowly until it was at the top. And we would repeat that process. Meanwhile, also making sure that this stayed, you know, slightly above max until it was fully bled out. But now that we've done all that, There goes the clutch pedal. You can see it's at the top. We're going all the way down and it returns up. And man, that is a, that is a very tight clutch pedal, just like it, how it was when I first bought it pretty much. So now this all left to do at this point is really just, so 
I actually had to get another slave cylinder because this part, this first part, there's too much play in here. And I ended up losing the cap and I made it hard to get in there. Um, the actual honest problem was with the original slave clutch cylinder and where the piston was back here. It was, uh, brake fluid was seeping out through, through here. So that's where it was busted somewhere down in the piston. And that's what caused the problem. But uh, two slave cylinders and um, I went through, let's see, one, two, three, four, five master cylinders figuring this all out because I kept breaking them because uh, the other slave cylinder kept sitting in correctly in there and get hung up and I break the, the, the piston on the master. Anyways, say all that to say, hey, it's now on tight, good and tight and all I need to do is get the uh, battery box in here, get this cleaned up, get the battery in here, get all this reconnected and we'll see if it starts and we'll take it for a quick drive. <laughs> So that one repaired and over to somebody who needs a vehicle. Anyways, if you enjoyed watching this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. That's going to do it for now. Thanks for hanging out with me here on Having Fun Repair. So this has been Sean. Take care and goodbye. Mark?